How's it going, everyone? It's JLH Mac here, back, and this time we're on week four of our challenge to go from thirty dollars up to thirty k. Since we last spoke, Six Plus Hold'em has been released on PokerStars. Um, it's a completely new format. If you haven't heard much about it, uh, I'll put a link in the description below where we went through the game on the first day of its release. Um, so far, we haven't really been playing too many tables. Mainly, we've just been learning the game. I've been in the lab learning. Um, let's just jump straight into a game. And I will try and explain what's going on and the thought process behind it. So, I'm just going to set up the table. All right. We get immediately put into a game. Uh, we don't have to put a player blind. So that's really nice. And we got pocket jacks, very first hand. Um, if you notice, we are sitting 100 big blinds deep. And you might notice I'm limping. Now, I'm sure you're going to ask me, why, why, James? Why are you limping? The answer is pretty simple. But first, I'll sh explain why after I do this. Let's do this first. Thank you very much. Right. So let's get into the ins and outs of this game. Um, before this player made a raise, the pot was $1.75. And we only need to put in 25 cents more to be able to try and see a flop. Uh, that means from the earlier positions, if I do want to play, I think I just want to limp in. Uh, if I get too many things outside of my range, that's not good. Sorry, uh, if I split the range between raising and limping, that's not a good idea in my opinion. So we've got top pair here, we're gonna bet once and try and take it down. We don't like being called in position, that's not good. That's not a good thing. Uh, I don't wanna stack off. If he bets into us, we just let it go. Top pair, four-handed, doesn't play that well. We're just betting because we think we have the best hand and needs to be protected. Because in 6 plus, people hit stuff all the time. Anyway, um, as you can see, whenever I am playing, I'm going to be limping. Unless I'm in the hijack, the cutoff, or the button. Or unless there are limpers before me. Um, now... Took me a little while to get used to that. Um, the best, the first way that I found to do that was to go um, on YouTube and I looked for Triton Poker Series um, because I knew they played high stakes. No, I shouldn't say high stakes. Nosebleed, ridiculous stake cash game of in this format. Similar blind levels, similar blind, uh, similar blind structure and stack size compared to the blinds and realized pretty quickly that it's going to be quite hard to be raising under the gun while at the same time playing enough hands. So these are the spots that I noticed the most. Uh, I also noticed the raise size required. So if you look at this guy here who made it $1 to go, he's never going to get anyone to fold um, with that bet. So it's a pretty poor attempt at a sizings. Um, if you want to re-raising, I think you need to generally make it, if you're six-handed, even 10 big blinds is a good idea. Eight to 10 big blinds when you're six-handed seems good. You just got to generate that fold equity. It's really, really hard to do that um, when equities run so close. So when I say when equities run close, I mean stuff like uh, Jack-10 and Ace- king having very similar equities against each other they're all basically flipping if they got it all in pre-flop now once you have a situation like that it means to force people who are in position on you to fold it's going to be very very hard so you have to make pretty large sizings to to do that uh king 10 i was planning on playing but after this raise i guess i can fold if I free bet, I end up having to stack off. That's not good. Um, and another thing you'll notice is that I'm not rebuying to maximum. Uh, it's because I think right now a lot of players 
uh, are not aware of how wide they should get it all in. And uh, there are lots of multi-way spots where I can end up being heads up with the attempt uh, with the possibility of tripling up or quadrupling up, which is amazing for a short stack. So I, I let myself be short. I'm quite happy to play short and then go all in lots, gamble times. If you notice their top set against the straight was a flip. Let's bring up the replay so I can t show you exactly who was favorite. Ace nine suit, I'm gonna try and raise. The reason I'm raising here, when I'm in these later positions, is you can play wider from the hijack, the cutoff and the button. So I can limp and raise, have a mixture between the two when there's less people to act behind you. I'm trying to steal the blinds with this raise uh, and a board like this is just not hit us at all. Right, we've hit an ace on the river. It might be good. You never know. Hope it for a check. Whoa, he flopped two pair and didn't bet any points. So we're going to write down. Let's see if multi way post flop. Need to make that note. Right, so here, top set against a flop straight. Straight is winning right now, but it actually has less equity um, than top set. Uh, the board ran out like this, and jacks for one. So there you go. Queens, we limped, we've been raised, we're going all in. If we're called, most of the time we're flipping, but against nines, we're really ahead. Nice cheeky little double up there. Whoop. Uh, and this is one of the first hands we don't play. Open limping. So I think so far I've been playing overall about 40% of hands. Uh, I think that's the right way to approach it um, from what I saw in the Triton series. There was only one player that I saw that was only playing raise or fold. And I just can't see why limping having a limping in there wouldn't be a good idea um the games aren't running as crazy as they were on that live game i think that's because people still are uh, don't understand that once they've cold called with a suited connector type hand and then someone's re-raised and then someone's called they end up having to call um, if you watch the earlier video we did that when, when this game came out, I ended up having to stack off with Jack-10 suited and I was up against King-King and Ace-King and it turns out that I was the favourite to win the pot, which I would not have guessed. Um, and that kind of situation arises over and over again, uh, whereby you, you end up having to call. Uh, you're just kind of forced and dragged into this huge pot and then it's not even that bad because you actually favorite to win. So, all good. Is that six any good? Will we get to see? If he bets here, it doesn't make too much sense because why would he limp this early position with a seven? Shouldn't happen that often. Nice. Oh, ace king again. Right, so if you notice, every time, as soon as someone else sits out, the actual amount that we're playing for is less. Now, you saw that I was playing um, this game I was playing for. $25 is what I sat down with. Now, this game plays nothing like a $25 sit-down game on other... Um, There's nothing like $25 sit down in like regular Zoom cash or whatever. 
Um, I guess the closest thing that I can think of where you sit down with 25 is PLO. And that is if you're short stacking. Um, should I bet again? I think I want to. I think I'm going to bet quite large. Bluff, of course. Taking it down. And we're going to raise this one. Uh, I almost made it a bit too big here. Uh, if you notice, there's only $1 in the middle. At one point, there was $1.50 in the middle. So, Got to play it different depending on the amount in the middle. Um, if everyone is sitting in this game, then there's $1.75 in the pot. Now, that plays. you're playing for more money preflop than you would in $0.50 cent a dollar on regular Hold'em and in PLO. So even though I'm sitting, I sit down with $25, it, this is a big playing game. And uh, as you know, last time we checked the bankroll, it was $1,700. So I think this is the biggest game we should be playing right now. Even though it plays, we're kind of basically playing an NL100 game, slightly short stacked. So we are definitely shotting with our bankroll. Um, but loads of players are playing in my opinion, quite badly. Uh, so we're going to take advantage of that, take the shots, go really aggressive. Um, I think we're going to try and up the amount of tables throughout this next week. Um, I think that's the goal. Also to learn some more equity spots. I hope to be able to soon go through those with you on stream. That would be sweet, wouldn't it? Um, but first, I need to make sure it's uh, interesting enough for you to see. Otherwise, right now, it would just be like Excel sheets. Not that interesting to look at overall. Uh, I'm just going for a small bet just to try and take it down. Probably have the best hand. Most likely had the best hand. Uh, on this turn card, realistically, if I had... Uh, most of my aces, I, I am checking with the intention of trying to get to showdown. So Jack-10 is near the bottom of my range, I think. And then on the river, I can think about turning my hand into a bluff, trying to get a queens to fold. Um, so that's the plan. If a queen calls me, then that's bad. Nice. Everything's going our way in this session so far. Um, you notice I'm not going to play this ace nine suited. I've realized how rarely we, we hit flushes. Um, so even though it can be a nut flush, it's very rare that we hit them. And the playability of a low kickered ace is, is a lot worse than you would expect. Like, it's even harder than in regular Hold'em. So even here, I wouldn't be that happy with Ace-9. I have to say. I'd have to play very big, very fast. Lots of turns and rivers I really don't like. Ace-Queen. So like I said, from not hijack, cut off or button, I'm limping everything from earlier positions. It's quite hard to deal with... Um, means you have to isolate and you have to isolate fairly small really against me because I will limp jam on you a lot. Uh, then again, we are now deeper stacked. So when we're shallower, it's a real problem. Um, ace queen, I am going to flack all. Our opponent is representing six, seven. So we have to be aware of that. I'm thinking to go for a raise here to rep a full house. Uh, but he's from Greece. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to let it go. <laughs> if he wasn't, I think I'll be betting, uh, raising. Um, I'm super dependent on where their players are from until I know them more. 
Uh, I think Greek players normally know how to play Potlima Omaha, know that they sometimes have to defend their straights. Um, whereas, let's say, if this if the player was from, I don't know, Ukraine or Russia or somewhere, I reckon they're going to be bet folding a hell of a lot, which is good for me. Uh, 9 10 here. I can either call or raise. I think, given we're just getting really good odds and we're in position, I'm going to just call. Turn card is bad for our opponent. It's good for me. Uh, my range, anyway, not for my hand. Uh, we're going to bet fairly large. Um, I don't think we can get kings to fold on the uh, turn, but I think we could get them to fold on the river. Uh, the river is unfortunately another club. I don't think I can rep represent the ace of clubs that well. I don't think I want to be bluffing here. I think I've got lots of better things to choose as a bluff. Okay, I don't think he was ever planning on folding aces except for on the river. If he did want to fold them. Um, I can limp here. I can raise. I'm going to go for a limp. Because if I raise, I end up probably a little bit confused whether to play for stacks or not. So we're going to limp and call. Is my king high likely good here? No. I don't think it is. Uh, do I think I can get him off a seven by the river? Yes. Do I think I can get him off a jack by the river? Depends on the river card. So quite a dry board overall. Um, okay, let's try and get value from a jack then, I guess. Nope, he won't do it. Okay. So, so this player uh, seems to not know what he's doing with a sizing like this. Um, I'm going to raise him. I'm going to isolate to be in a heads up pot with him. Uh, when you've got pocket pairs, you prefer to be in a heads up pot compared to anything else. Definitely. Um, unless you hit a set, then it's all good. So a board like this is really not good for my hand. Um, I think I'm just going to bluff it. And then fold to any action. Okay. Yeah. We're done. Check it back. Hit a queen. Nope. Let that one go. Yeah. These kind of pairs really don't play anywhere near as well as in your regular hold'em, unfortunately. But they are still strong pre-flop. Um, but when an ace and a king comes down... Which happens a lot more often than you would like, I have to say. Queen nine suited, I th well, I'm not sure if I want to play it, I'll just fold. I think I'll sit out. Anyway, so the next the game plan for the next week is all about the six plus. Um I hope you can all join me. I'll be over on Twitch. Uh and at some point in the near future, I hope we can start looking at ranges and equities and all that stuff. Really start breaking down the game and getting a nice edge. So let's have a look at the bankroll. Uh, let's sit out of the table. So we're up 40, about 40 bucks on last week. Nothing amazing, but uh, if you were watching one of the streams, we ran really bad, lost every flip. So I'm quite happy that we're still up. Um, this game is really, really high variance. Like we said, the 25 buy-in game is like playing a 50 cent a dollar game. You're playing for a similar pot size. So expect some big swings between the next week. Hopefully, it will be a big swing up. But uh, you never know, we might be moving down to the $15 games. I think if I go under 1200 I'll move back down to these $15 buy-in games. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Anyway, um, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, and I hope 
next week we will be well on our way to over 2k really anyway see you again see you later peace